All right. Well, first thing on the docket after a little bit of a hiatus here, probably our longest hiatus in history. Hmm. Possibly. Possibly. We're gonna we're gonna take it right to a little dynasty value question that old Doug Eddy uh, threw out on Twitter probably last week at this point. Tevin Coleman, let's go. Tevin Coleman. <laughs> We want to see what Tevin Coleman's dynasty value is at the moment. Well, he did, and that was, was something the that we we were actually kind of talking about around that week as well. Um, yeah, Tevin Coleman came up in some trade talks for us, and, and yeah, and one of we have him in um, FFPC league. We were talking about different things, and Doug Eddy's tweet came around at the right time for for Casey and I to talk about it. Right. So the so the options were one eight through one ten, one eleven, one twelve. Two one two two and other, please comment. Gotcha. Um, he didn't say please. No, he just said comment. Um, Jerk. So just I kidding. thought I thought this was an interesting uh, and conversation the, piece. The, the two one two two got the got the majority. got the nod. Got the majority votes. Thirty nine percent. And I, what what really got me fired up is when I scrolled into the comments and don't scroll into the comments, uh, bro. That's a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. And which I usually, the worst. which I usually stay away from, but you know, the, one of the first comments that I saw was that you know I'm not, I'm not paying for Tevin, I'm not paying for a handcuff, I'm not you paying know. a first round pick for. A, I'd for pay a it too if I had Freeman. Like that's the only reason you'd give up a two for Tevin Coleman is if you had Freeman. And and let's back up to the handcuff part right, here. That, I think that that's what stirred the conversation of just you know just. What are you talking about? Handcuff Tevin Coleman. Yeah, and Bo, there, Bo. If if what you, are you doing? If if you have Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman's one of the best handcuffs in history. Sure, sure. Yeah, he's a handcuff if you had Devontae Freeman, and good for you for pairing him up. But to call if Tevin don't Coleman have, a handcuff, right? If you don't like have Casey Devontae said, Freeman, is, Casey said it's short. Your reply to that was that short sighted to call him a handcuff. He's going into the last year of his deal. Right, and he's been nothing but productive on the field. He's been a startable RB two for pretty much the last two years. Yep, and was injured most of his rookie years. By so. the way, but uh, you know, to repeat one thing that every all Tevin Coleman truthers love to repeat is he beat out Devontae Freeman as a rookie. Started the first game of the season, got twenty carries, cracked a rib. Devontae Freeman happened. Right, and then he's been the backup ever since. But the backup on a team doesn't necessarily mean he's the backup for your fantasy team. Not in especially not in today's NFL. Exactly. Right. There's well, Tevin Coleman no... was like the start of of the second running back on a team being fantasy relevant. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. Yeah, I don't Close know. Close enough. Yeah. Decent we've all stab. Been, we've all been looking for the next Tevin Coleman like like uh the the Browns guy uh Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson, right? Right. Probably a little bit different of a of a player than Duke Johnson, I'd say, but I mean, if that's sure. if that's your if that's your what your look that's your upside of this player, then I'll take that all day long. Exactly. Well, see, the the thing is, is you know, RB two gets thrown around. You know, people like Jay Wayne made a move last year or the year before and traded a second away for Frank Gore so he could have an RB two. You know, like people people we're just assume it's a twelve man league, so you got twenty four running backs. The the term RB two gets thrown around. Oh, I just I need an RB two. But it when you're really thinking about it, you'd love to have two RB ones, right? Right. You want to if you can if you can put together a team where your second running back is getting really good points, then you're probably going to outscore the other guy. A la Duke Johnson this year. A la Duke Johnson. Was the this ultimate RB two turned RB one? Exactly. Exactly. Turn, R- turned to RB1. turned it up to be an RB one. <laughs> I'd say it's just people don't understand how hard it really is to define to find that RB two dependable right. RB two. And he's been nothing but dependable in that spot. So even if you are the Freeman owner and you have Coleman and you have injuries or whatever's going on or you can't find another running back, most weeks you. You can stick him in your lineup and walk away. Set it and forget it. Absolutely. So Ronco, uh, what was that? Uh, the little oven that he had, the set it and <laughs> forget, forget it. it. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. Yeah. I mean, you could be having f- all the flex in the world with Tevin Coleman. You flex it up. For sure. And I like, listen, I know what time of year it is. I know the NFL drafts around the corner. I know everyone's excited about all these draft prospects. Oh, and the you, rookie oh, fever is ridiculous. I can't wait to get my hands on these guys. But if you're sitting here and telling me that, at, you wouldn't give up your two two one or two two all day every day and very damn Jay. But and the stipulation was that you had to have Freeman as your uh, handcuff. Uh. Like, come on, man. Like I I would be jumping for joy if the guy that I drafted at two one two two was Turned anywhere in. near doing what Tevin Coleman was. Let alone has the skill set that Tevin Coleman has. I like, hope the guy at one eight that I drafted one eight 
or one ten right. has the Tevin well, Coleman we're skill there. set. We're about to climb this ladder. Like that's that, I'm, right. I'm going. I there. jumped like, the gun. Yeah, you yeah, did. It, I jumped exactly. It. That's that. That's the point here. It's like it's rookie fever. We just went through our FFPC cutdowns. Trying to get a rookie pick, trying to get a draft pick off of somebody is like just trying to steal yeah. their baby away from right. them. Like it ain't it ain't happening. And but like. All right, so I, it, the the R, the dependable RB two thing. People don't understand how hard that really is to find out. So last year, Kyle Shanahan leaves the Falcons, and they dropped off from their record breaking twenty sixteen offense. Right? Sure. And all take away. I I filtered last year's PPR points by running backs. Take away the week seventeen stats, and you still got the twenty fourth running back. Because we're gonna go by RB two here in twelve team league, right? The twenty fourth running back was Chris Chris Thompson. Who had an amazing start to the season, missed the back half, missed the last five games. The twenty third player was Alex Collins, didn't play week one, then rattled off a, a ginormous two point two, an eight point two, a six point two, a five point two, a seven point two, and a three. Decent game, a sixteen, and then a five, and then he rattles off some good games. So what I'm what I, the reason I wanted to bring gain, gain the trust and got it, some starting right, but starting it doesn't take. Balls. The reason I wanted to say that is because Alex Collins has the worst first half of a season of any you know starting caliber running back. You know if he wasn't starting on your fantasy team until the second half. But the reason I wanted to bring all that up and paint that picture well, don't, is don't forget who was at twenty two. What it takes, Frank exact, Gore. I'm getting there. I'm get that's that's what it takes. Uh, half a season of non-existence basically gets Alex gets in a decent second half gets you on the 23. You're trying to find a, a startable running back for your team. So you can, that's the object of the game is to try to win the championship. That's why I play. I don't know why you play, but we're trying to win here. So if you're talking about RB twos and Tevin Coleman gets labeled a handcuff in this conversation on Twitter. He comes in. Frank Gore goes 22nd. Nine out of his 15 games were 10 points or more, but mm. I think all Frank Gore owners knows that it didn't get very far over 10. Yeah, but, but every game it was 10. That's what I'm saying, and it's still lower than Tevin Coleman, but Tevin Coleman's a handcuff, remember? So follow mm. me. So 21st place is Tevin Coleman. Nine out of 14 games for him. By week, and he missed a game. Okay? Mm -hmm. So nine out of 14 games, he goes over double digits. And if you, these are out of, these are the points, these are total points, not points per game. If you look at points per game, Tevin Coleman's 11.5 puts him more of a 13, 14, 15 list. So I, what else do you want from a guy who has a starter in front of him, but he's a also awesome dynamic enough. This is in the 2017 Fal Falcons offense. Right. Don't get me started this about is, 2016. This is, with, this is with a guy, Sarkeesian, who has, you know, hasn't had much experience calling an offense or designing a scheme zero experience you know. in the nfl right zero nfl experience he comes in and coming coming off of a life-changing situation got, right you know alcohol took right. the, took him to, took a toll got a got a reboot and and came in here and <clears throat> and did it did a did a pretty decent job in his in his first year but it wasn't you know the shanahan kind of the guy who picked tevin coleman to do what he did you know in 2016 but i mean but you want but you want the the 2 1 or the 2 2 or you want to take that stab on that rookie because it feels so good when yeah. you have that time and that and that pick to make that pick and you're like oh well this this guy could change my franchise well <laughs> yeah. guess what Tevin Coleman could go somewhere after next year and change your franchise absolutely and some dude down in the comments made a good good comparison to Jarek McKinnon and that's what happened it's, uh, uh what's his face um who makes it? Uh, Josh Trotta. Okay, so Trotta comes in there and brings in brings up the McKinnon McKinnon comparison, which is absolutely what you were trying to make in your first one. You were like, it's short sighted to call him a handcuff when he's on his last year deal, and you know last year right. his deal, and he could go somewhere else next year and be a starter. And like my the other point was like, you got a guy who's been scoring points in the league. You have no idea what you're getting with one. Even if you go to one eight, like you said, Jason, you go to one eight and work back to two one. Two, two. You got no idea what you're getting with any of those picks. Could be a complete bust. Could take four years to get any production out of the guy. Absolutely. Right Meanwhile, now, I'm getting a guy who knows, who I know, can score points in this league and could be very well at, at the chance to be the Devontae Freeman in the next situation. Maybe absolutely. he's still splitting time, but he's the lead dog rather than kind of a little bit of the second thought, but still doing work. Exactly. And meanwhile, he's been a high end RB two. Right. And meanwhile, you feel confident playing him in your lineup. Every week. Well, just like anybody, here's the thing. 
there's a handful of guys, and last year's rookie crop came in there and thickened up the running back position. Right. There are five or six of them came in and like just hammered in, and then you know you got the. Uh, but out, well, let me stop. But outside of any of those guys, Alvin Kamara was the only guy who ended up falling down at the bottom of of a board there where you could have got a hold of him unless him you and were Kareem up in Hunt. that like well Kareem him Hunt Kareem by the time Hunt. it rolled around. Spencer Ware oh, yeah. was hurt, and he was up in the top if of the— If you had a late draft and Spencer, Spencer Ware was already hurt, you had to go Kareem Hunt, 1-5, one, 1-6, one, sure. just like with the rest of them, no doubt. But So you got five strong, six strong rookie running backs that come in last year and make their mark. But so, you know, you got your Gurleys, Bells, Zeeks, all those guys, and then the rookies that come in. I like to talk about points per game instead of total points, but I just was making my points earlier. But if you click sure. on last year's points, and even if you hit points per game, which brings back your David Johnsons, brings back your Ezekiel Elliott's because he was suspended, but his points per game are ridiculous. And it even pushes Chris Thompson up in there because the ones that he missed were you know didn't count, so the ones where he was tearing it up. Tevin Coleman is still at 21. Right. Still at 21. So and that that's what Rex, Bur- Rex Burkhead being in front of him with the good games he had with you know with the games he missed. So again, my point is, if you want to label Tevin Coleman uh, a handcuff, I just think I I think you're absolutely wrong. Yeah, you're missing it. You're missing the point exactly. He is he a great handcuff handcuff if you're a Freeman owner? Absolutely. Maybe never a better handcuff. Maybe never better. He's certainly. He's certainly broken out of the the Ben Tate handcuff mold. Like yeah. Ben Tate was good for a couple of weeks when when um, Arian Foster was hurt, but never was Ben Tate startable when Arian Foster was right. not hurt. Right. Tevin Coleman is his own asset. He is his own right. entity. And let me back that up by talking about we just we just talked about some of the rookie picks and and, and some of our when we were going through talking about like uh um. Josh Gordon and those kind of guys when we were talking about some ADP values and startups and stuff like that. Tevin Coleman is ADP like 60 right now. Right. 62. Which, so, again, is doesn't even make sense. Which, a pick higher than Carlos Hyde. Right. You know, a pick, you, two picks higher than Rashad Penny, who's probably going to go one five, one six, one seven. Another in your start in your rookie draft. Another great argument against you know, you know, one ten, one twelve, what two one, two two. The guys that are going in those spots, like they're not even close to where. That's Tevin so. Coleman's there's going. your rookie fever, and we just dealt with this trying to get make our cut down on FFPC and trying to trade guys that were decent for rookie picks because we didn't want to cut the really you know the guys at the bottom of our bench that we didn't want to give away for nothing. So we were trying to trade decent guys and get picks. Your rookie fever is getting outrageous. Whereas James Washington is sitting here at rookie at, at ADP eighty, and go down here a little bit. Christian Kirk ADP eighty seven. And so you're talking about Royce Freeman. You're talking about pick 112 in, at, at 100, 97 in a startup. But Tevin Coleman's up here at 62, and you got guys talking about I wouldn't give up a, a 2 1 for him. Yeah. You know, what are you talking about? Or, or, one, or 111, 112. No way I'd give up a first. He's not worth the first. It's not even right. Cool. Like, come on, man. Exactly. Just like I you know said, you're excited about this. Just process. like you said. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> what was that <laughs> over there, soundboard? <laughs> If you if you, if you think Tevin Coleman is just a handcuff, you are. <laughs> Sorry, I can't that, really what's hit. What's that even saying? What's he says you are lame. lame. Oh, okay. I got you, Jay Z for so you. Drawn, so just like you were saying to get this lame. thing started, just saying you, just like you said to get this thing started. It was almost as lame as that audio drop right there. <laughs> can't do it while two people are talking. <laughs> no, sure. not at all. <laughs> the one the the one eleven pick. And I've said this before: one ten, one eleven, one twelve. Tev, you know, you got to erase Alvin Kamara from your expectations off your back yeah. end first round early second round lucky. rookie pick. lucky i'm in that group i got lucky a bunch of times good that's but but it's luck i'm not i don't think there's any skill in that i got lucky if you hey, can get a tevin you know, coleman you identified kamara and you liked kamara and you took kamara if you I'm see if you that, screenshot right? you send me a, you send us tweet tweet us or email us a screenshot of your rookie draft where you took where kamara, you took kamara one, six. one eight or better I, one eight or better, I'll send you a twenty dollar check. No, you won't. I certainly will. <laughs> you, you're about to get a bunch of. Give me a screenshot. No, but it's got. If you doctor it up, I'm gonna figure it out. Jay Wayne will figure it out if it's right or not. I don't know not. if he can. I There's need some screenshots. Pretty good photoshops out there. Give me, give me, shoot them over. We'll talk about it. We'll debate. It's good luck trying to get any money we'll out of Big We'll debate authenticity. <laughs> we'll debate the authenticity. So, all right. So, just, just, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be done with this rant because it, it's starting to tick me off. Tevin Coleman at ADP sixty two. Sixty two. 
Six and, and two. And I got people saying he didn't sure. want to give up a two for him. So yeah. Stone. Only would give up a two if he if he there. Only if they I had, had Freeman. Freeman. Only if I had Freeman. But other than that, I don't want him. He's right. Handcuff. The staunchness. This right. is why he shouldn't be on Twitter. This is yeah. why he shouldn't just, just well, don't go. So you get you get when Tevin Coleman does get his chance to be a little bit more of the man and has one of he only has a couple a handful of double digit carries all throughout the season. One of them was like the last week of the season against Carolina when it just was a bad game in general. But well, they were already in the playoffs. So right, it matters. Week seventeen. So Dallas at Seattle and Tampa Bay. Dallas, he goes twenty for eighty three, averages four point two a carry, has a touchdown, uh, gets a reception. Solid day being the man there, right? Solid. Next next week he goes up to Seattle, has a bad average, is two point two a carry, forty three yards. But guess what? Gets a score in the air. Gets a score on the ground. Oh no, sorry, score on the ground. Just a score on the ground there. So, but he, he ends up getting you twelve points in that game, or, or something along those lines. Almost thirteen. Almost thirteen. So, not a terrible day being the man. It's tough up in Seattle, regardless of if they're great or not. The defense is usually half decent, especially Seattle. Oh, at well, home. Man, yeah, absolutely. And against the run, sure. and then he you know plays the Bucks uh, the week after that. Has nineteen carries for ninety seven yards, averages five point one, scores two touchdowns. Two touches. Um, and the other time where he got double digit carries, fourteen. Uh, totes for 82 yards averaging 5.9 a, a carry here like when he gets his chances for the most part he delivers for you like the, the writing's all over the place like he's gonna be all right like he's fine when freeman's in the game he's great when freeman's not in the game exactly, right? exactly. What, what else do you want here you, he, you can't be so short-sighted that you're just being like oh well he's freeman's handcuff right now and i don't want him if that's all you're looking at man you need to stop playing this game mm-hmm well, and you also you got yeah exactly you got that to look at, but you also got this huge regression that, that you know quote unquote everybody you had, got a drink you said regression you had yeah but but everybody knew that it's positive regression oh, Kyle, right <laughs> no Kyle, positive or negative right Kyle, Kyle Shanahan yeah positive regression that doesn't work Kyle Shanahan leaves <laughs> so the Falcons had to get worse. And they absolutely did get worse on offense, but well, Tevin, that's only because he took his magic pixie dust with but him. But Tevin Coleman's sure. fantasy output, <laughs> even though it went down, the consistency was still there because he was in his twenties. Yeah, he was in the top. High, he was he was still it's, an RB two. Dude, average the, is almost it's the efficiency of Kyle Shanahan's offense leaving town. Right, that. absolutely. So we, we we got a couple of these fancy stats that we drew sure. up here to talk about. Sure, we talk about how good Tevin Coleman is without getting the love. Right. Yeah, for sure. So, 2016, RB21 on total points, missed three games with a concussion. His points per game of the guys who were healthy enough to be on that list makes him 14-15. I said that earlier. So, 2017, my man's breakaway percentage looking real hot. And if you don't know what the breakaway percentage is, it's the percentage of yards that come of runs of 15 yards or more. Yeah. So, in 2017, his break, 15, or, 15 or more yards per attempt – number seven in the league right so the big regression that was 2017 he was number five in 2016 sure so he fell off two spots with kyle shanahan leaving still top 10 top seven or better the last two years in breakaway percentage which is a home run threat that's what we want we want our play jay wayne wants his fantasy points made in one play mm. from his wide receivers one day why can't my running backs do it too one why, play jay wayne sure you want to talk about it pass blocking oh yeah i mean that, this is this is what'll get you on the field and keep you on the field and now we're sorting the 2017 and some of the 16 columns by 25 percent of being like snap shares of, of being on the because he doesn't he's obviously not a full-time starter yeah this is efficiency not reps this isn't how many times right. he did pass block but, but when he was out when there he was out there pass blocking he was good for number seven out of all the players sorted at 25 percent of being on the field or whatever that which is. still keeps which all is, the which high is the, end which is even there. more guys on the, exactly. on the field it's not less guy like when you sort up to 70 it gets to like 10 he's, guys yeah five guys six guys i think i saw um, that so fantastic pass blocker and that will that's what will get you on the field and keep you on the field his pass blocking efficiency being number seven in the league efficiency rating on pass blocking when you when you threw that stat at me jaw dropped one of the, Just one of didn't the guys see that coming one didn't of the guys it. in that category is a fullback yeah mm. and it, the other one is marshawn lynch yeah the other guy is marshawn so lynch, that's which like is, a fullback on steroids right so you got basically. So basically, what you just told me is he's number five in efficiency right. because it's one of them's a fullback and the other one's Lynch. So They'll that just doesn't run count. through a motherfucker's face. Nobody, nobody's trying to blitz against Lynch. They they right. say Lynch and they're like, ah, we'll mm, get him next time. Maybe maybe the next one. Right. So <laughs> basically, I'm gonna just go ahead and chalk him up for number five in pass blocking efficiency, which I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, you throw a fullback in there. I mean, what do you? What How's do you, he looking in yards per route run? 
Well, I mean, in yards per route run in 16, he took the top Don't spot. Don't you say it. Don't he you say it. He took the top spot. Number yards, one? Yards per no route way. run. With, I thought he's a handcuff. With Shanny involved. He's a handcuff. With Shanny involved, number one in yards per route here. run. Get out of here. How about 17? Where's he at in 17? Pretty good. His yards per route Only. run were better than Christian McCaffrey's. <laughs> oh, now, boy. Christian McCaffrey's sample size is bigger. Five times as big as... Tevin Coleman's, but you cherry picked, right? Exactly. But isn't that fun? But this is this isn't is what, this is what people do. This is this is what everybody does when you're talking about people and stats. And this is why stats can be manipulated and bent in any which way. Because when you when you if you, if I just said that and didn't say it and and didn't look at the amount of right. routes run for Christian McCaffrey and the amount of routes run for exactly. Tevin Coleman, like so, you could just be like, oh well, he was better than Christian McCaffrey in that category. Exactly. In 2017 yards per route run, he's better than Christian McCaffrey. That's 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 the cherry but pick. In 2016, stat. there was no Christian McCaffrey, and he was. But he took the number best. one. Right, exactly. Well, you, well, you, sometimes stats lie. Sometimes they don't lie. I don't know what stats are doing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Nobody ever knows. <laughs> right. Nobody so ever knows what they're twist them to do but, what I want them to but do. What's, but when, when we cherry yeah. pick, when we cherry pick here at Married to the Game, we tell you we did it as we're doing it. Right. We're not, you know, we're not trying to paint a, a fancy, ridiculous picture here. We're just trying to make we're we're trying to make fun of some situations, but at the same time. 2016, he's number one in yards per route run. 2017, the whole efficiency level of the Falcons backs up a little bit. So, sure, he didn't get that number one spot again, but he was better than Christian McCaffrey, and it just sounds funny yeah. when, when you say it like that, and we're cherry-picking, but it's... There was know. lots of people on here who didn't didn't think Tevin Coleman was worth what the polls were saying any in a first or the, this early second, and I, you know, I, all of us here are in agreement that I got no problem giving up you know, one nine, one ten, one eleven, sure. one twelve, two. And one, I would two, not two, trade Tevin Coleman two. away right. for and, your one well, nine. And that's the biggest thing to bring this all together is as Josh Trotta mentioned and I, I had mentioned in, in that tweet of saying, like, I don't think you can trade Tevin Coleman right now because people aren't respecting what he's worth. You right. gotta right. hold. You have to hold if you're a smart guy, you gotta hold Tevin Coleman right now and ride it out for another season. You're gonna get Starts out of, you're going to get he's going to be startable next year and then you have the chance to be as Josh Trotta said kind of the McKinnon of this year and, and it will be even be hotter because what he what Tevin Coleman is and has done on the field on a pretty regular basis absolutely absolutely and again just that the the back end of the first round of the rookie draft you don't ADP is still in the 60s yeah, exactly startup is ADPs in the 60s and people are talking about not giving a late first but you don't you still don't if know you're what in you're that getting. startup at that particular time, like, you know, and well, you're trying well, you, to, right. You're going to not, try, you're going to pass on Tevin Coleman and go down and take Christian Kirk because that's where you would take a late first right, round pick. Right. And to start up, it, you, you just lost 40 spots ADP value. So, and, and it just like, but, but, but also like I would be, if I, I would be tr like, if I wanted to get that, if I wanted to get Tevin Coleman, like I got no problem training away you know, my second round pick next year to try to get to, to leverage myself getting another pick maybe in that 60th area because Tevin Coleman fell down. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, I'll, I'll use some of my next year picks to leverage maybe getting back up into that 60 range to grab a guy like that. Yeah, and it and for this discussion, for the question that Doug Eddy put out there was based on what would you give up in a rook, as far as rookie picks. You just still don't know what you're getting. And and you could go up. I mean, Kevin White was taking one, two, one, three, one, one in his situation. He didn't get it. You know, you, there's you still didn't get anything out of Kevin White yet. You 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 know the. You Vikings, know what you're gonna get out of any of these rookies? You don't know what you're gonna get out of any of them. Co we're talking. We can none talk of about, them have stepped on a field. We've seen Tevin Coleman crush we, it. We can't talk about any of these rookies this this year because we haven't seen any of them. But you're right about what we've seen out of Tevin Coleman. And look at the last couple years of rookies. Other than the rook, other than five or six rookie running backs last year, and Juju Smith Schuster that came in at, from a late first Cooper round, Cup. early second round player, come in and, and make a name for himself. You still don't know what you're getting. Yeah. Right. All you, right, you guys, you guys done going ham on uh, Tevin Coleman? We love no, Tevin. I mean, Coleman. we're not. I'm not going ham on him. I'm just, I just wanted to have uh, a, that was ham. That I was that was hard to, as just, a motherfucker. That's what that's what ham well, stands for. No, nobody, nobody's given the do. He's got like right. Who's who's telling you what kind of efficiency rating he's getting on his pass blocking? You know, <laughs> like dig that shit up and look and be like, okay, this dude's a, he's an NFL player. Right. Like Casey said, that's what gets you on the field, what right. keeps you on the field. And everybody loves a rookie running back that can pass block, right? Well, none of them can really. Yeah. 
So Every, now Tevin Coleman can. Everyone loves all these positive attributes. His yards about per route run is ridiculous. His, these rookie running backs, but Tevin Coleman sitting here. Pass blocking efficiency is ready ridiculous. To go. Primed right. and ready to be a stud. PPR, he's a, he's RB two already, high in RB two already. I mean, come on. Right. This That's, dude, this dude basically averages a fantasy point per per touch. I can take that. He's super efficient. He's electric. He can make your play. And one he can day. make your day in one play. I fuck that up every time. He can make your day in one play. He can grind it out between the tackles. He can cut on a dime. You can send him out wide. You can send him on a go route, a slant. He can run all the routes. Number he can one line in 2016 up, and pass. Uh, line him up wherever you want. <laughs> line him That's up wherever you want. Stat. And That's he hasn't real. even been utilized to his full potential yet. And he's only 25. He's a great pass blocker. And he's only 25. Like. He's got yeah. one more year in a solid offense, and then he's probably going to go somewhere else to get an opportunity. So go buy him for your late first if you can. Hold him if you got him. Exactly. Rookie value Smoke right now. Smoke him if you got him. Rookie value right now. If you can get Tevin Coleman for 2-1, one, one twelve, you got to snap him up. Oh, Jay. If you're, looking at, if you're looking at a startup right now and you're looking at a 60 ADP startup, I don't have a problem with you passing on that. But if you can get him for 112, 2 1, you better snap that up so fast because not only what if Devontae Freeman gets hurt this year? Sure. What if he what if he's lightning in the bottle this year, but yet it's not lightning in the bottle because he showed us he's put the proof on the tape and on the fantasy points and in your starting line. And in the pudding. He's put it he's put it on and everywhere you want him to put it the first couple years of his career, and next year he could be a starter somewhere. I don't have a problem with you passing on him if you took a bunch of you know, you took you got one or two solid guys, and then you took a couple of riskier guys. But if if you're if you're looking to like just, I, I feel like it's a really solid long now pl- long, and long long play. play. Like you can get it. You can get starts out of him now in the sixties, and then you could be really cashing in Absolutely. on him. At, you know, so like I I get it. Depending on how you drafted the beginning of your startup, maybe you don't want to invest in Tevin Coleman right mm-hmm. there. But there's there's parts of me like I was saying where maybe I drafted already, and I think he's fallen a little further, and I'll I'll. I'll throw my second or, or or first next year in the pot to try to go ahead and grab Tevin Coleman because I think he should be gone already. Yeah, I, I see exactly what you're saying there. And the thing, I know Jay Wayne wants to get done. Uh, here's my last thing. The McKinnon example is great because it just happened for him and he went to the 49ers and now his value just shot through the roof based on where you put, had him. You might have bought him a couple weeks ago before free agency. You might have been holding on to him, whatever. But before that, McKinnon in a short bench league was on waivers. And before that, in a big bench league, he was on your bench. Right. Like, Tevin Coleman's been even, able even, to be – Tevin Coleman is a solid asset, even yeah. if he stays on the uh, – even if for somehow, in some way, the Falcons are like, we're going to pay two good running backs good money, which doesn't happen in this yeah. league anymore. Even with that, he is very, very startable, you yeah. know? And he has been. And if you you would lose nothing by giving up a, two tw- a you know, 112-2-1 for him now. And if he does go somewhere and, and free, free agency – and becomes the clear cut starter like McKinnon just did. Right. Then you get a big you get a value boost over that. But having said that, right now to this point in his career, he's been so much better and more consistently productive yeah. than Jarek McKinnon well, ever you was. Could, you didn't know when to start McKinnon or Murray there was last no starting year. McKinnon. You, know, you might have rolled the dice once or twice when you saw a matchup that you liked or something. But it was t- it was a tough. Well, at a certain point last Tevin year, Tevin Coleman you, you, is. You oh you no, you started him. You started him. You started him after Dalvin Cook got hurt for a couple of weeks, and right. then all of a sudden but it was the Murray, Murray some comes back in there. Yeah, but, t- but exactly to your point, like Tevin Coleman was normally startable right and was would usually return but where was Mc- on what you needed where was mckinnon two years ago when it was just him and asiata right right could hardly get it done and he had four he had four games into that season yeah. droppable let's 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 get out of here we're, all right we're, we're getting we're getting on here yeah, let's go settle down take a break gather our composure we'll be back with more married to the game <laughs> 